Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug video. And in the last couple of weeks, there's been a little bit of news and discussion about the future direction of the show, how long it's going to go on for, and what that future content is going to look like. Now, unlike a lot of other popular shows, Miraculous Ladybug didn't really end up having a proper Comic-Con panel at San Diego, which means that the fandom really did miss out on having a huge info dump about the new season, and the specials, and the film, and basically anything else to do with the franchise, like we got for Marvel or Dragon Prince. And in the last week or so, I really have honed in on talking about a lot of the stuff that we learned coming out of the various different panels and whatnot that we got to see. And so, today I think I want to take a step back into the Miraculous fandom and talk a little bit about what the future holds for that franchise. What is Miraculous Ladybug going to look like going forward past Season 5? Is it going to keep going strong and really cement itself as one of the most iconic and popular cartoons ever? Or is it going to die off hard and fade into obscurity, to be replaced by something else, as has happened to many other shows? Maybe it'll be usurped by the upcoming film that's being developed, with the show itself being left in the dust. Or maybe a spin-off's going to be made that's going to catch fire. Guess we'll have to wait and see. But there's always room for speculation and discussion. And so that's what we're going to focus on doing today. So, with all that being said, let's get into it. So, one of the big focal points of discussion over, like, the last month or so within the fandom was the idea that Miraculous is going to be running for, like, 12 seasons, I think it was. So that means another 7 seasons on top of the one that's coming out, which, based on the rate at which they release these things, would mean the main series would end sometime during the 2030s, which, yeah, Jesus, that's given me an existential crisis. No thanks. Let's stay here in the early 2020s where I can still consider myself young and not have to worry about being an actual functional and responsible adult. Thank you. But yeah, that frightening thought aside, I think that this discussion point has pretty much been debunked by a number of other channels. And by debunked, I mean they explained it doesn't necessarily mean the show will run for that long, just it's an idea. Although, let's be real, if it remains popular and profitable, they're going to keep making this forever. After all, after the release of The Last Airbender in the mid-2000s when I was just a young boy, when I was a boy, they said, yeah, we're finished with this, we're not coming back. And then a few years later, they made a sequel series. And then they once again said, mm, we're done, no more Avatar. And then they started making comics with the same characters. But no more TV shows, they cried, as they developed a Netflix live-action adaptation and then formed a new company just to produce animated films in the universe they created. Star Wars is just a trilogy, said George Lucas, before releasing a prequel trilogy. Now this is pod racing. And then selling it to Disney, who created a massive cinematic universe with it. Does Marvel look like they're going to slow down? DC? <sighs> now Game of Thrones has a cinematic universe. And what do you know? Another Lord of the Rings show. Nothing stays gone anymore. Everything's going to linger on for the right price. And Ladybug is no exception to this. After all, it is ridiculously popular. So I would recommend you strap yourselves in for 12 seasons, a movie franchise, and spin-offs. Because Zag is riding this gravy train to the terminal station. But let's dig a little deeper into all aspects of this, starting off with just the show. So we know for a fact that season 5 is coming, after all. The first two episodes have already released. And whilst we've now returned to the dreaded no man's land where we sit here for weeks at a time, waiting for even a sniff of a release schedule to set our minds at ease and soothe our wounded souls, we can rest assured that it is coming at some point. I mean, unless there's some sort of terrible financial disaster that prevents them from finishing the show. But yeah, let's not tempt fate with that. So we know for a fact that season 5 will be released. And this will herald the end of the Gabriel Agrest saga. After all, it is time. That storyline is beginning to get tired by this point. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Season 4 had a lot of great moments, and so far, Season 5 seems good. But it's just time for the franchise to move on. And so I expect it will at the end of this season. And we'll get some new, fresher villains. And realistically, that means Lila and Felix, judging by how the show's been written in the past couple of years. Although, for some reason, I can just imagine Asterix's hatred of Chloe somehow manifesting her into the major villain role as well. Ugh, that's cursed. I mean, her character is very old hat at this point. Just let her rest. And we also know that work's begun on future seasons as well. And I think I read somewhere that they're currently in the process of writing season 6 and 7, and that there have been some trademarks or copyrights or something that hint at a season 8. So that's another two seasons minimum after season 5, with what's likely yet another season after that. And this is where my worries for the franchise do start to creep in. Because despite season 4, and maybe 5, we'll have to wait and see, improving on the formula of the show, 
by the time we get to a brand new Hawk Moth, I very much feel like we're going to be sitting in very stale territory. How many more episodes can we realistically have with Hawk Moth standing there going, <laughs> It's time for my little Akuma! Like, come on. This season, they've resorted to giving the villains miraculous powers to keep things fresh and interesting. But even that can't really last forever. At a certain point, you have to kind of think of a new way to structure the show. And honestly, if they want to keep up the longevity, once the main villain's replaced, that's the time to try new things and experiment a lot more with how you want the show to operate. If they simply go back to that Monster of the Week type format where it's just akumatized villains or senti monsters over and over, then I don't see the show actually making it to 12 seasons. And if it does, I expect its popularity would have diminished quite significantly from the glory days. But then, on the other hand, I will admit that a shit ton of cartoons and shows have managed to churn out truly mediocre content for years upon years and still retain a hugely loyal and massive fan base. So who can really say? But I would say that that's probably my main thought going forward beyond Season 5, as more and more seasons of the show release. They really do have this chance to reinvent the show and change up the formula, because let's be real, the main draw of the show is the characters, not the story. The story is fun, and the episodes are fun, but everybody knows the main attraction of this show is the dynamic between the lead characters. If that status quo is maintained, then it doesn't matter what type of villains they fight, or what the format of the show is, it's still going to be successful no matter what. But in the interest of maintaining my sanity, let's hope that they do change things up. I can't imagine yet another decade of another hawk moth lurking in their lair, sending out purple butterflies to turn random people who stubbed their toe into deranged supervillains. Oh, I'll get you for stubbing my toe! I just don't see how this is sustainable at all. And it really is a massive worry for the future of the franchise. It's going to become very stale over the years if nothing changes. Especially since soon, we're going to have those identity reveals. They're the driving force behind the narrative currently. Without them, the whole Adrian, Marinette, Gabe dynamic dries up. And so a reinvention is definitely going to be called for when we have our replacement villain take centre stage. And if you ask me, honestly, a time skip would not hurt either. There's only so much you can do with the characters after the first saga's concluded. But by aging everybody up and jumping ahead in the timeline, you make room for new stories to develop organically. Or at least, that's how I see it. But anyway, beyond the show... I think the franchise definitely has room to grow in other areas. And obviously, first we have the upcoming film, which I'm confident Zag hopes will kickstart a cinematic universe of some kind. Whether this thing's actually going to click with audiences and make a big dent in the box office really does remain to be seen. But if it does succeed, I expect that we're going to be seeing a lot more films in that universe start to be developed. Kind of like how we're starting to see new Avatar films being developed to follow off from The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. And honestly, I think a film franchise would actually work really well for the world of Miraculous, because let's be real, the show's main issue is that it struggles to develop its characters and its storyline in a timely fashion. There are just so many episodes, and many of these episodes are so samey, and thus, the development is heavily stretched across the episodes. But with a film format, you can hyper-condense these storylines and have a whole lot of development across, I don't know, an hour and a half? I mean, surely you couldn't justify this franchise being any longer than that in a film. But by smushing all the story together, you cut down on filler, and you cut down on bloat, and you can actually have a really engaging and concise storyline, which I think would do wonders for its popularity. So yeah, the film coming at some point. Maybe 2022. Maybe 2023. No idea. There's not much news. At least, as of when I wrote this. My only problem with this is... It's making two separate universes, a film and a TV universe. So it kind of feels like they're rebooting their own show, whilst still making it, which doesn't make any sense. I get that they want to be able to introduce people to the world, but this show's mega popular. I mean, I think they could have gotten away with a film that's part of that shared universe. <sighs> but I guess we'll have to wait and see. After all, it could be a massive flop, and this could all be a moot point. And this brings me to my final element that I think is going to be a key piece in the future of the franchise. Spin-offs. And I don't know why, but I feel like the spin-off shows from Miraculous have the potential to be mega popular. Maybe not on the same level as the show, after all, spin-offs rarely are, but I feel like they're really setting themselves up for some big success by expanding the world, first through the specials that introduce the new characters and locations, but then through future series that hone in on the characters and tell their own story separate from the main series. I mean, that Lady Dragon series that's apparently in the works? How good does that sound? Am I right? She's such an interesting and unique character. 
I think it's going to be great. So yeah, whilst I think this fandom does have a tendency to be a bit pessimistic, and you know what, fair enough, I often feel that way too, and there are legitimate concerns about the franchise to be had, I do think the future is actually bright for the world as a whole. The show has increased in quality, and it seems to be coming to the conclusion of its first big saga. And based on the last two seasons, the writers seem to be willing to change things up, which I think means the later seasons have a much better outlook than they ever did before. The film also has the potential to kickstart a whole new level of popularity, if it does well. And even if it doesn't do well, the show's still going to go strong. And then on top of that, we have the specials and spin-offs to expand the world and lore, and tell new, interesting, and diverse stories. I've been re-watching season 1 recently, and if you told me we'd be here, based on the quality of season 1, I'd laugh in your face. But now? <laughs> well, I'm really expecting Ladybug to go on and cement its legacy during the 2020s, and I'm all here for it. But as always, these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the future of the franchise? You think it's bright? Maybe not? What do you think the future holds? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.